Hi everyone and welcome back. In the previous video we added a leaderboard to a Tetris game. However, there are some issues with it and in this video we're going to fix the issues. So let's get right to it, shall we? First of all, when we restart the game, the leaderboard data disappears. Why does this happen? To answer this question, for the first time on this channel, we will cover a topic that's normally covered in the very first computer science lectures. But since on this channel we do not touch upon theory that has no relevance to us at the moment, it's just now that we cover this topic. So, computers have two types of memory, or storage. Short-term memory, also known as RAM, and long-term storage. While our Tetris game is running, all its data, including the leaderboard data, is stored in the short-term memory. And when our game terminates, all of its data that was stored in the short-term memory disappears. In other words, to save our leaderboard data, we need to move it from the short-term memory to the long-term storage, meaning we need to save that data in a file. Some of you might ask, why does it have to be so complex? Why does a computer not store all its data in the long-term storage? Well, short-term memory is more expensive, so it's more cost-efficient to have a combination of a relatively small amount of short-term memory and a much greater amount of long-term storage. But if long-term storage is cheaper, why not just get rid of the short-term memory then? Well, the short-term memory is faster than the long-term storage, and basically it's more expensive because it's faster. Alright, so what we need to do is we need to save our leaderboard data in a file in the long-term storage. Sounds simple, right? What can be more trivial than saving and loading data, some of you might think? Unfortunately, it's not so trivial, and using JTable only makes it more complex, and to be fair, more annoying. But this is why we're using JTable after all. Okay, so first of all, in the leaderboard form class, let's declare a private void method that will be in charge of saving our leaderboard data. Let's name it save leaderboard. Now, as mentioned earlier, it's table modal, not the JTable, that is responsible for storing data. But in addition to player names and scores, our table modal stores some other data that we do not need to save. In other words, before we save our leaderboard data, we need to extract it from the table modal. That is actually not too hard, which is called the get data vector using our TM table modal. The get data vector method returns a vector of vectors. Vector is a data collection class, pretty much like the array list. Now we can save this vector using the so-called serialization. The word serialization sounds fancy, but it's just saving objects to files, or moving objects from the short-term memory to the long-term storage. We have a vector object, and we can save it to file using serialization. And then we can load it from that file into the short-term memory using deserialization. Alright, how do we serialize our vector? To serialize an object in Java, we need to use two classes, file output stream and object output stream. And of course, we need to import both classes. One way to initialize a file output stream object is by passing it a string that represents the name of the file that we want to store the data in. Let's declare a private string variable that will store the name of the file, which will store our leaderboard data, and pass that variable to the file output stream constructor. This code throws an exception that we will catch a bit later. We can now use this file output stream object to initialize an object output stream object, like this. And there's yet another exception that we will catch later. Now that we have an object output stream object, we can use it to serialize our data vector by passing the get data vector method call to the write object method of the object output stream class, like this. Finally, we need to close both streams, otherwise it might cause some nasty issues. And now we need to make NetBeans shut up by catching all the exceptions that might happen. This piece of code might throw two types of exceptions, file not found exception and IO exception.
Sometimes it might be necessary that your program responds to all possible exceptions differently. For example, when exception A happens, your program must say hi, and when exception B happens, the program must say bye. In our case, we don't really need anything to happen if our game fails to save the leaderboard data. I mean, it's a game, and if for some reason it cannot save leaderboard data, it's unfortunate, but not critical. Because of this, instead of catching the two exceptions separately, we can only catch one generic type of exception, which is just exception. And since we don't need anything to happen when an exception happens, we just leave the body of the catch block blank. Now, where in code do we call this save leaderboard method? I say we need to call it every time a new player is added. So we do that in the add player method after the add row method call. Let's now run the game, lose it on purpose, add a name to the leaderboard, and close the program. If everything went well, we should now have a file named leaderboard that stores the name and the score that was just added to the leaderboard. The question is, where can we find that file? The leaderboard file should be in the project folder, and the path to the project folder is here, in the console. I hope you remember how to open a file path. If you don't, please google open file path. And if you open the project folder, you should be able to see a file named leaderboard. And if you open the file, you will see a bunch of weird looking symbols, and among them, you should be able to recognize the name that you added to the leaderboard a moment ago. So this is what our serialized vector object looks like. Now let's deserialize it. Let's load the data from this file into our leaderboard. First of all, where do we write the code for that? I say we write it in the init table data method. We were able to get table data by calling the get data vector method on our table model, which kind of gives us a hint as to how we can load the data to the table model. Right, there should be a method that begins with the word set. And the method that we need is this one, set data vector. We're not interested in the other one because it takes an array of object arrays as a parameter, while our leaderboard data is stored in a vector. There is a problem though. The set data vector method takes two parameters named data vector and column identifiers. We do have a data vector. I mean, to be more precise, we will get it from the file via deserialization, but we don't really have anything that could go for column identifiers. Well, when you need a piece of data and you don't have it, you just create it. We could extract that data from the J table, but I think it would be easier to just create it manually. So we need another vector. Let's name it CI for column identifiers. The job of the column identifiers vector is to set the titles of the columns that we previously did in design mode. In other words, we now have to set the titles in code. Since we have two columns in our table, we need to add two items to the CI vector. How do we add items to a vector? Just like we add items to an array list by using the add method. Let's add a string player and a string score. Now, to serialize our leaderboard data, we use the file output stream and object output stream classes. To deserialize our data, we need to use the file input stream and object input stream classes. To the file input stream constructor, we pass the name of the file that stores the data that we want to deserialize. In other words, we pass it the leaderboard file variable. The object output stream constructor, expectedly, takes a file input stream object as a parameter. Now, to serialize our vector object, we use the write object method. To deserialize our vector, we call surprise surprise read object method and pass it to the set data vector method as a first parameter. As a second parameter, we pass the CI vector with column titles. Now, NetBeans is yelling at us that no suitable method found. This is because the read object method returns an object, while the set data vector method requires a vector. I know, I know, so damn picky. 
Oh wait, we know that in the leaderboard file we have a serialized vector object, meaning we can force the computer to convert that object to a vector object. We did something like that to convert table modal to default table modal. Does anybody remember how? Right, we used typecasting. Let's now get this object that the read object method returns and typecast it to write vector. Finally, let's not forget to close the streams and catch the exceptions, just like we did in the save leaderboard method. Now, if you run the game and open the leaderboard, we will see that name that we added before. Deserialization went well. Yay! Now, do you remember how I called JTable annoying? Well, I do think it's not the most user friendly thing, but to play devil's advocate, let me say this the JTable component has a broad range of functionality, and to support that functionality, it has to make seemingly trivial things more complicated. One example of that functionality is sorting. Let me run our game and get my score a bit over zero. Then add myself to the leaderboard to see my name got added to the bottom of the list, even though I just got the highest score. Unfair. So let's have our leaderboard sorted so that the highest score is displayed at the top of the list. To do that, we will use the table row sorter class. We can view the table row sorter as a dude that takes our table modal and sorts it. Sounds simple, but you got it, there are some technical annoyances. First, let's declare a member variable of the type table row sorter. The table row sorter dude also needs to know what it should sort. In our case, it's table modal. Looks similar to array list, doesn't it? Let's name this dude just sorter. And we also need to import the classes. Now let's add a new private void method named init table sorter. And call the method right inside the class constructor. Inside the init table sorter method, we need to create a table row sorter object by passing to the constructor the table modal of our leaderboard table. Now, because our JTable and its table modal are two separate things, the JTable doesn't yet know about this order. So we need to assign this table sorter to the JTable by using the set row sorter method on our leaderboard JTable. Next, the sorter needs a list of the so-called sort keys. Simply put, a list of sorting rules, rules that define how the table modal must be sorted. The list of rules can be represented by an array list of the type sort key. Both classes need to be imported. To the list, we need to add a new sort key object. And to the sort key constructor, we need to pass the index of the column that we will sort by, and the sorting order. Since we want to sort by the score, and the index of the score column is 1, we pass 1 as the first parameter. To specify the sorting order, we can go sort order dot descending. Sort order is an enum, just a data type, and descending is a constant or simply put a variable that belongs to it. We will not talk about enums, you got it, to keep it as simple as possible, but if you're interested, feel free to google it up. Finally, we need to feed this list of sorting rules to the sorter dude by calling the setSortKeys method, like this. Now, to actually sort a table, we need to call the sort method on the sorter dude. But where in code should we call it if you want the leaderboard to get sorted every time we add a new player? Right, inside the add player method. And now, if you run the game and open the leaderboard, we will see that it's now sorted. Great, but there is an issue. If I first score, say, 2, Then I score, say, 12.
12 will be put below 2 in the leaderboard, which doesn't look right. This happens because the score isn't treated as a number. And to fix this, let's switch to design mode, open the modal of the J table, and set the type of column 2 to integer. And now if you run the game, and open the leaderboard, we will see that the scores are now sorted correctly. Another issue is that when the score goes into double digits, the game area gets messed up. This happens because when the width of the text in the score label increases, it messes up the layout of the form. There's a quick workaround. Let's open game form in design mode and make the score and level labels wider. And this should fix the issue. This is just a quick fix. Anyways, step 8. Complete. Alright folks, we're almost there. We now have a Tetris game with a leaderboard. There are still some issues that I consider minor so we won't be fixing them in this video series. However, you're more than encouraged to fix and improve the program as you wish. And this is it for this video. In the next one, we'll add sounds to our game to make it a bit less boring to play. Looking forward to seeing you then. Bye.